What's going on? It's Neighborhood Chris back with another video for your head top. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. How to be successful, the 3H method. Before we start this video, just a few housekeeping rules. Number one, not everybody's definition of success is the same. For some people, success might come as a six figure salary, or for others, a multi million dollar corporation. Some people, politics. Others, a big house with a white picket fence and a golden retriever that plays fetch. For me, Success is living a fulfilled life, having my basic needs met by passive income, and feeling like I'm in control of my own destiny. Being a pharmacist doesn't make me successful, but it does play a part in the bigger plan. I identify as a minimalist, and I'm a huge proponent of the FIRE movement, or the financial independence retire early crowd. It's not necessarily about retiring early as much as it is about having that freedom and being able to pursue whatever makes you happy at your own pace. The feeling of not having to stress or worry about um, living paycheck to paycheck or trying to make ends meet. And also a life where I'm able to give as generously as I want to. Besides, do pharmacists ever retire? I think we all know of that pharmacist who's been in the field for decades and continues to show up to work maybe two to three times a week. I wouldn't mind being that guy. I'm going to be involved in patient care as long as I can continue to do so safely and effectively no matter what age I am. Rule number two, success is an asymptote. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? All right, let's take it back to the algebra textbook. An asymptote is a line that continually approaches a given curve but does not meet it at any finite distance. All right, let me give you guys a graphical representation of an asymptote. Example being me and my high school crush. As you can see, I'm represented by the blue line and my crush is represented as the red line or the asymptote. The two lines get very close, but they never quite actually touch or meet. It looks like there was even a curve involved somewhere. Ooh. An asymptote. All right, jokes aside, success is something you have to keep striving for. Because if you don't, that's when things start falling apart like a house of cards or a nature valley bar. All right, longevity is factored into my definition of success. As you may have heard plenty of times before, success is a marathon, not a sprint, and the marathon continues. RIP Nip. All right guys, I'm about to divulge to you the top secret method known as the 3H method. And all you have to do is account for these three things and success is bound to happen. And you might just increase your productivity too. And I guarantee that no matter what field you're in, I'd like to stake my reputation that this will help you. For the rest of this video, when I refer to success, I'll be talking about success in the more holistic form. Living a fulfilled life, one where you can enjoy your passions, have a meaningful impact, and also have time for yourself. All right, let's go. Step one, form good habits. Okay, so word is going around that it takes 21 days to form a habit. And this may have been taken a little bit out of context. It may actually take between 18 and 254 days to form a habit, or on average, two months according to more recent reports, depending on the person and depending on the habit. Regardless, what's even more important than how long it takes to form a habit is what type of habits you're forming in the first place. Ogman Dino, author of the best-selling book, The Greatest Salesman in the World, said, I will form good habits and I will become their slave. We're much better off relying on consistency and habits over time than we are our own willpower. Because believe it or not, willpower is an exhaustible source. And we could all probably benefit from Ogman Dino's advice. I know we use this in the pharmacy when counseling patients. Oftentimes, we might counsel patients to link taking their medications to something like brushing their teeth, activity that people are hopefully doing every day, as well as eating breakfast or something of that nature. What's great is when you can form links on links when it comes to these habits, and that way you'll develop a consistent schedule without even really taking notice of it. Linking is one powerful way of forming new habits. Some habits that I formed in pharmacy school that really served me well include going to the gym. The other was making use of my school's resources. So the writing center was absolutely crucial for all my history and my literature classes. I would be in their office faithfully for every single paper. 
The writers there would offer tremendous help when it came to reviewing uh, my papers, proofreading, and helping to make my sentences stronger. The other was reviewing my exams with professors after taking it. This alone helped me so much in terms of just understanding the material and also gaining a rapport with my professors. Now on the flip tip, you want to really avoid bad habits because all it takes is one time for things to change. So remember guys, choose your vices wisely. Step number two, be happy. I attribute a lot of my quote unquote career success and success in pharmacy school to staying happy and keeping a positive outlook. Guys, pharmacy school was pretty trying. I spent a lot of nights staying up studying, a lot of nights working on papers, and not to mention the whole anxiety and uncertainty about the future. Yeah, there's a bunch of stress balls walking around through pharmacy school. It's not always the most pleasant or healthy environment. But a few things to understand is that I couldn't do it with my own willpower alone. I had plenty of support and I had a good idea of what kept me motivated. Now that's exactly what I want to talk to you guys about. Two big factors in motivation. Intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic motivation and how both of those interplay and how we use both of those in our daily lives. Intrinsic motivation comes from your passion. It's something that you can't really explain why, but you just feel compelled to do something. You ever have that thing that just brings you joy, that you feel like this is what I was supposed to do from the start? That's intrinsic motivation. Like for instance, I couldn't tell you what attracts me to basketball. All I know is I love watching that ball go through the hoop and I love playing the game. I'm intrinsically motivated to play basketball. I'm intrinsically motivated to study and to teach. If I could do those things, there's, I do those things because they just make me feel good. They make me feel joy. And going back to my previous video, it's that thing that naturally piques your curiosity, that keeps you up at night and wakes you up in the morning. That's your intrinsic motivation right there. Fortunately for me, I was intrinsically motivated to learn and apply the skills I picked up in pharmacy school. Now, when we talk about extrinsic motivation, extrinsic motivation comes from an external source, things not within. Extrinsic motivational factors might be a paycheck, might be a raise, it might be your boss telling you good job. Extrinsic motivations are factors that come from outside of you. Intrinsic motivation is like premium gas for your dream car. It's needed. Not to say that there isn't a role for extrinsic motivation because we all need extrinsic motivation to do tasks that we wouldn't normally do. Like for instance, me writing papers. Not a huge fan of writing, but comes with the territory. Now, if I had to choose, um, I would definitely prefer to spend my time doing tasks that I'm intrinsically motivated to do. But unfortunately, we know that life doesn't work that way and not everybody's afforded that privilege. But that still doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to do our best and strive to work on our passions. But I wonder what happens when you get a group of individuals to work on tasks that they're intrinsically motivated to do instead of extrinsically motivated to do. I'll tell you what happens. The post-it note happens, Google Talks happens, Google Maps happens, Gmail happens. All of these things that I just mentioned were made during 20% time. And 20% time is an innovative strategy where employers let their inventors work on whatever project of their choice for 20% of their work week. Great things happen when people get to work on tasks that they're intrinsically motivated and actually want to complete. So my advice to you is this, work on your passions, but make sure you keep the lights on. And, oh, stay happy. Step three, get a hobby, guys. The harsh reality for most students is that GPA doesn't carry a lot of weight in the real world. I know, I know, it hurts me too. Don't neglect your GPA, but offer some things outside of that. Seriously, it'll really benefit you because GPA for the students, 
once you start looking for jobs in the job market you'll be up against a lot of highly trained and also equally competent candidates so what's going to make you stand out things like leadership your hobbies your passions employers want somebody that can do the job effectively but also somebody that they can just tolerate somebody that's not probably stiff as a board or stiff as me doing this YouTube video at 11 p.m. midnight. No, but having a hobby will let you talk about things outside of the regular degular during your interview. You want to have an edge. You want to be more than just a robot. As you know what they say, all work, no play makes Jack a very dull boy. It's really good to have hobbies because they encourage you to think abstractly and outside of the usual box that you're in. Even besides that, guys, having a hobby is just going to keep you sane throughout all the monotony. I get it, guys. College can be very intense and rigorous, and you might not have time to do all of your favorite activities through studying, through all these other things that you're involved with and working. But it's important to have at least a few hobbies. I mean, you don't want to be that 4.0 with nothing else to talk about and nothing else going for you. Having hobbies will give you something to talk about during interviews, and it'll also make your workplace a lot more just enjoyable when you get to um, show pieces or show glimpses, show flashes of your personality. That's what's gonna make you stand out during an interview more so than that 4.0 GPA. I'm just saying, your hobby might be basket weaving, it could be BMXing, it could be beatboxing, whatever it is, just do it. So you want to have hobbies and other things that you can speak about. Neighborhood Chris, what are your hobbies? Oh, thank you for asking. I mean, I'm a fun guy. Obviously, I love the game of basketball. I mean, I can't just come up here and tell you all about myself. There's some more questions you got to ask me. I mean, I can't even see you sitting there. <laughs> some of my hobbies are basketball fitness reading oh and music i love music in college i bumped j cole heavy i wasn't really a kendrick fan at the time believe it or not he's great <laughs> before before you guys attack me he's great but i listened to drake wale i love I love rap music. I love real spitters. I love Slick Rick, Tribe. A lot of just old school and storytelling raps. That's what I was about. This is a tip that I had to learn during pharmacy school and a really important tip for you guys. And that's specify what hobby you're gonna do based on the amount of time you have. So I love playing basketball and going to the gym, for instance. But when things got too busy, I had to put those aside and I had to work on other hobbies. Music was an outlet. Music was an escape during pharmacy school, during those long hours that I was studying and not able to go to the gym or play basketball like I really wanted and was intrinsically motivated to do. I listened to music. So guys, put in your 10,000 hours and become a master at something. And maybe we could be one of those lucky ones that our hobby brings us not only joy, but a little compensation too. There you have it guys, how to be successful using the 3H method. Remember to focus on the three things we talked about in this video, your habits, your happiness, and your hobbies. This video was adapted from a presentation I made in my third year of pharmacy school, along with my close friends, Tyler Pakpo and Luke. Shout out the kid. And follow my guy, Tyler Pakpo on Instagram. I put the link in the description for some helpful resources referenced in this video. Watch ASAP Science's video on productivity, really eye-opening about motivation. Do me a favor, like this video, comment down below if you wanna hear more about a healthy mindset, and let me know how do you define success? Neighborhood Chris signing off. Peace.